The journalist Maria Ressa is facing both criminal charges and social media threats. Harassing journalists is one of Rodrigo Duterte's specialties. Mr. Duterte, the strongman president of the Philippines, has been going after Maria Ressa, a former CNN reporter and a founder of the online news site Rappler, for two years. The campaign against her combines criminal charges with Facebook smears intended to tarnish her reputation and spread lies about her work. Last week, Ms. Ressa spent a night in jail on a charge of cyberlibel for a 2012 article that Rappler published about allegations of corrupt ties between a businessman and a judge. When we spoke over Skype on Thursday about the attempts to silence her, she said, I have to adjust that this is normal, even if there is nothing normal about this, she added, it does not scare me, but it is meant to scare everyone else. Technically, she spent the night in a conference room, rather than a cell, because the National Bureau of Investigation agents were trying to be nice, she was told. It was perhaps a small gracious act in what has been a relentless assault on Ms. Ressa and Rappler. Rappler has been all over President Duterte's brutal regime, publishing articles on extrajudicial killings and other human rights abuses. In mid-2017, in a State of the Union speech, the president struck back by criticizing Rappler for being owned by Americans some of its investors are indeed from the United States. He attempted to get its license revoked. Ms. Ressa was then charged with tax evasion. Then the arrest for cyberlibel, which is considered a criminal act. While she seemed tired of these legal roadblocks, she was undaunted and even funny when we spoke. I think I have paid more in bail than Amelda Marcos, she said, referring to the shoe-loving wife of the longtime ruler of the Philippines who went down in ignominy. It was morning in Manila, but she was not doing any journalism. Instead, she was adding more security to Rappler's offices to protect its 100 employees and forking over more money to pay for lawyers. Legal fees already account for a quarter of its operating budget, she said. She is also contending with the relentless manipulation of social media by what she says are government-friendly sources to spread false information about her and Rappler. The Say Trolls focus on Facebook, which is where most Filipinos get their news. She has been called a foreign agent, a troublemaker, a tax cheat, a traitor and ugly. Last week, two people whom Ms. Ressa suspects were working for the government managed to slip into Rappler's building and broadcast a video on Facebook Live from just outside its door urging protests and social media attacks. Among the comments on the feed, hang Ressa, bomb Ressa, and behead her. Government officials have said she is enjoying the attention. She is not, and Ms. Ressa reported the video to Facebook. She had already provided the company with copious evidence of the way its platform has been abused by Mr. Duterte's troll army. This time Facebook responded by blocking the user who posted the video for 30 days. He may have popped up again on Facebook in Singapore, though. It's a cat and mouse game, and Ms. Ressa said Facebook is haphazard about enforcing the rules. While individual executives have been helpful, Ms. Ressa said, she's had a hard time dealing with Facebook, which has responded slowly. Facebook is now the world's largest distributor of news and yet it has refused to be the gatekeeper, she told me in a recent onstage interview. And when it does that, when you allow lies to actually get on the same playing field as facts, it taints the entire public sphere. At some point, she said, Facebook has to take down the lies. As she noted to me on Thursday night, a lie told a million times is truth, on social media, though, that is more like a billion times, Ms. Ressa said she wished she had tried to stop the online abuse sooner, we ignored it far too long and that is the lesson I have learned. She said she would continue to try to work with Facebook and other social media outlets. Looking at my social media feed is impossible now, since I can't defend myself as I watch my reputation being dragged down, she said. Lately, Ms. Ressa said, the attacks on her on Twitter have worsened. And I have been weirdly pummeled on the platform by users calling Ms. Ressa a con artist since I posted that I was speaking to her. To try to deal with it all, Ms. Ressa said, she thinks a lot about Reinhold Niebuhr's serenity prayer. I will look at stuff in my area of control, like making sure my staff is safe and we have a business to be able to continue to do what we are doing, she said, with a weary sigh. I don't want to be the story. Thank <laughs> you.